Hey friends, we continue our study through the New Testament. We're seeing, we're following along with Paul now as we get into the back half of the book of Acts. Luke is along for the journey, so this is eyewitness testimony from Luke now. And uh, we see Paul has moved west into Europe, started a church in Philippi. Now he's been escorted out of Philippi after being stoned there and jailed and so forth. And he and he goes down into Thessaloniki, we call it the Thessalonian church, starts a church there. And then Berea, who examines all the scriptures to see if he's accurate, love that about the Bereans. And, and then he moves south to Athens. Now, Athens is a much different town than what he's been faced with. Athens is scattered all over the place with temples and uh, idol worship and all kinds of things because they're so pantheistic. They have so many gods. So Paul takes a slightly different approach in this and goes back to eliminating all the multiple choices. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how more choices actually make it harder to choose instead of less? I remember, sidebar, but I remember dating Diana when we first started dating. We, I'd say, where do you want to go out to dinner? And and she'd say, oh, I don't know, whatever you want, you choose or uh yeah, anything is fine. She had these four or five different answers. I told her, one day, I want to build a restaurant that has whatever you say, you choose, it doesn't matter, whatever those phrases are. I'm just going to put those on the sides of the building so you can go to the place that people are always excusing themselves from choosing. <laughs> uh, I find it fascinating that kids and even adults struggle on choosing when there's many choices to be made. And Paul figured that out somehow in his speech to the to the Stoics and the philosophers of Athens. He's up on Mars Hill, this hill that stands right next to the temple mount that they have on a large hill in Athens. And, and he starts speaking to all of these philosophers and he says, I can simplify this for you. You've got all these gods. You've even got a tomb to an unknown god. Let me tell you about the unknown god that you're trying to find. There is one God, and he created the earth, and he goes through all of this explanation about uh, God himself, and then he said he's demonstrated himself through Jesus, and he's called all people out of their excuses, out of their ignorance, to repent and turn back to him. So Paul simplifies the message to two choices. All these multiple choices you have to pick from, he says God has put up with your ignorance for all this time, and now through Jesus, he's demonstrated his own character, and you have two choices. You can choose any of the idols of the world, or you can choose Jesus. That's, that's your choice. Repent and turn back to Jesus, or choose whatever you want in this world and face the consequences later. See, Paul is making it clear to everybody that multiple choices don't actually help us. What we need is is to make the single choice that God has given us, to repent and turn back to him, or to live our own life and face the judgment later. And that may be a clue as to what we need to be saying these days as we live in a pantheistic culture as well. We have multiple choices. People have chosen themselves as God. People have chosen their their sexual identity as God. They've chosen their lifestyle options as God. They've chosen lots of things to be God of their life. And Jesus would tell us the same thing, that the way and the truth and the life has already appeared. You have two choices. Live the way of the world or follow the way of Jesus. Which will you prefer? Make that choice, and there is no third option, because the next season will be one of judgment when Jesus returns. I encourage you today to realize you have two choices, Jesus or everything else. Which do you choose? Repent and turn back to him before it's too late. God bless you. We'll see you again next time. Have a great day.